How you doing? Look at the person beside you and say, have I told you lately that I love you? Go ahead. Now, if you're sitting beside somebody you just met, that's awkward, isn't it? Aren't you glad that you came to church? I just want to start out by getting you awkward right now. All right? Hey, I want to say hello to in this, those who are in this auditorium. This is our broadcast auditorium, and um, we've created other environments. We have an environment in the lounge, those that like to get up and move around a lot. We've created another environment for called the party room for kids that are not quite ready for kids' ministry, but like to say amen a little bit much. We've got another uh, campus, Western Harnet. We've got lots of people that are worshiping all around the world, literally, that tune in. We have an ex Excellent kids ministry that is bringing the gospel right now in whatever service you're in. Can we give everybody who's putting God first by listening to the word a hand? Can we do that right now? Come on. Amen. Excited that you're here. Excited that you're here. And I, I feel this calling over the last several weeks to pray for our kids ministry. And so whatever campus you're in, if you're a if you're child or if you know a child or if you know somebody serving in this particular service that you're at or whatever, can we just take a second and just pray for our kids? Because how many of you, when you watch the news and you see all these mass killings and you see all the shape this world's in, know that we need to raise a generation in love with Jesus? Come on, anybody? Amen. Father, thank you for this kids ministry. Thank you for every adult who, who they're not down there because they don't have anything else to do. They're down there because they want to, they want their life to make a difference. And they would love to sit in church and they'd love not to have responsibility, but they've signed up and they've studied a lesson because they want to impact the child's life. And I pray that you would do that. I want you to anoint me, but God, if even if you don't anoint me, anoint them in the name of Jesus Christ. If th their job this week is so much more important, I'm dealing with adults that know better. We just don't always do better, but these kids don't even know better. So God help us in the name of Jesus to be able to get the gospel in them, get the light in them and, and, and let them hear the truth. Thank you for the creative teams and the people that lead worship and all the people who put so much into it because it ought to be a sin to bore kids with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they're doing an incredible job to make it lively and entertaining and fun, but the truth comes through. And I pray you give them an anointing in Jesus name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Now, hey, if you don't know Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, I want you to know you're at home here. You don't have to believe like us to come to church here. But I also want you to know we built this place because we care about you and what God is doing in your life. And if you make a commitment to him, please let us know. Just if you, if you, if he, if you feel him knocking at your heart's door and asking you to give your life to him, give your life to him. Can anybody here say amen to this? Amen. Giving your life to Jesus will be the best decision you ever made. Amen. You don't care what you may make a good financial decision. You may make a good marriage decision. You may make a good parenting decision. But following Jesus will be the best decision you've ever made. And so I just I just strongly encourage you to step across that line of faith. And if you do, when you came in, you should have got a whatever environment you're in, whatever auditorium you're in, you should have gotten a uh, worship guide. And inside there's a prayer card. Fill one out. Give me whatever information on that prayer card you feel like you can trust me with on the back. Write any prayer needs you have. And if you make any commitments to Christ, write, I check a box that describes it. Or either just write, I prayed with you. We'll know exactly what that means. And if you've, if you've made a commitment to Jesus this year at all, would you just write that on the prayer card? Because it's important to us. We set a goal for 500 people to come to Jesus Christ. And so far, it's 370. The number hasn't been changed, but 370 people have made a commitment to Jesus Christ through the ministry of this church in Life Springs. Come on. Life Springs, give God a hand clap of praise for that. Amen. Hey, I want to uh, talk to you for just a second. Uh, every so often we do this thing called the Grow 2020 Reboot. And, and let me tell you a little bit about what that is. And we used to do a lot of fanfare and a lot of drawings and a lot of t-shirts and all that kind of stuff. But this time we kind of got away from us. And so we didn't do that. And we're not sure exactly how to do that going forward. I don't know uh, anyway, but but it, but the main reason we keep holding on to it is because it gives me an opportunity to tell you a little bit about what we're doing as a church and let you be a part of it if you'd like to be a part of it. And so it's kind of got a green thing, so I wore a green shirt because I wanted to kind of blend in with it. Because those of you who have a Grow 2020 shirt, some of them shrunk. And I don't think it had anything to do with the chocolate ice cream that I eat. I don't think it had anything to do with that. But, but anyway, some of them shrunk. So this is, this is what I have on to represent. So let me talk to you a little bit about Grow 2020 and what it is. A few years ago, and I, don't, I lose track of the time frame, but we were on such a growth rate uh, track as a church that we recognized that if we were going to continue growing at that rate, that by the year 2020, we would be averaging over 2,000 people. Now, the growth rate has slowed because it's clear we can't put 2,000 people on this property. And so we reached a place to where we have to do everything we can to try to um, 
uh, create space. And so we've created parking lots, we've created uh, lounges, we've created party rooms, and we've done so many things. And, and we started looking at building costs and what this county needed and what it happened. And instead of building a building that would just like attract people, this philosophy that most church has, and I'm not knocking any other church, okay, I'm just saying this is, this is the most of them's philosophy, is that we'll build a building and then we'll attract people to that building. We decided instead of being a gathering place, we wanted to be a gathering place, and I'm not saying we'll never, we won't ever build a building, we may build a building one day, but we wanted to be more than a gathering place, we wanted to be a launching pad. Amen. And so, so we decided that if God was going to continue to grow us, that we were going to slow the growth maybe at this campus, and, and we wanted to take the gospel beyond here. And here's why. You say, wow, why don't you just worry about Lee County? Our vision has never been just for Lee County. In fact, from the early on, we said from Lee County, anybody know Lee County and why? And beyond. beyond. And so here's why. It, it, it won't just that we were trying to be like Buzz Lightyear. It was because <laughs> North Carolina is the has the fourth greatest, we're the, out, of, out of 50 states in the United States of America, we're, we, there's, only, there's only three others worse than us. We're number four in the greatest evangelical church decline. And we're right on the edge of the Bible Belt, and we have churches everywhere, but they're dying. And I just feel like, we just feel like that we're responsible for that. And we stand before God. He's going to say, how could you let your neighbors go to hell on your watch? And so we just, we just had to do something. And so we decided that instead of putting our money just in brick and mortar, that we wanted, to, we wanted to be set up to be a launching pad. So the first thing we did is we paid off the debt for the church, and um, we're debt-free, and so we're excited about that. And yeah, yeah, every time I say that, somebody wants to clap. I think it's great. Amen. Then we started banking money and saving money, and we got ourselves in a financial spot where, where we manage our stat, we manage things pretty well around here. We wanted to give at least ten. We wanted to give away ten percent. We try to save at minimum of ten percent, but right now we're saving about fifteen percent. We've been doing that for a long time now. We never want our staffing to be more than thirty-five to forty percent, and so we we just kind of started organizing the the finances to where we could bank some money. And then what we wanted to do is down in the Spout Springs area, uh, the the Western Harnet area. There's a lot of soldiers and a lot of military, and, um, and we just saw the need for more churches in that area. And so we pulled together um, uh, some money, and we pulled together about 50 people from this campus, and we, we anointed them, and we commissioned them, and we sent them out to Western Harnett. And I am proud to tell you, we started in September 17th, and we didn't even tell nobody. We did no advertising. We did nothing. We did no advertising. We did no, no, none of that. Nothing on Facebook. Nothing like, we didn't do anything like that. And you know why? Because we've never done church in a school. We didn't know how bad our stank factor was. We needed to measure the stink factor. And turns out the stink factor's not that bad. It actually smells kind of good. And I'm proud to tell you that even with no advertising, the church has averaged 81 people <laughs> since 17, uh, September 17th. Yeah, give God. Life brings high five the person beside of you right now. Incredible things that are happening there. And about five to ten, I don't have the exact number, five to ten people have made a commitment to Jesus and we hadn't even been trying to reach the community yet. And so it's exciting, exciting stuff. And we've got equipment, we've got trailers, and, 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 and we've saved some for marketing. And we're getting ready that on January the 7th, we're going to do a huge launch to the community. And that's where we're going to tell the Western Harnett community that we're here, we're open for business, and we want you to be a part of it. So you'll be praying about that. So, so, so this is what's going on with the Grow 2020 is we are expanding the kingdom. We're expanding the kingdom, and, and we're giving a little more. Now, um, so, so we won't, what we've learned though, is that, uh, th the way this is going to work is kind of like a spider web. So we put one in, we want to plant churches or plant campuses that are going to plant churches or plant campuses. And so we put one in, in Western Harnett and hopefully there'll be people around there. We may go over to Eastover or Anderson Creek. I don't know where we'll go or Fayetteville and we'll just, just 20 miles. And, and now we've come to find out we've got a, we've got a Pittsburgh group right here in our church that has been meeting in Pittsburgh. I got a word this week that somewhere around 10 to 20 people are meeting in Pittsburgh. They're hoping to have two small groups in Pittsburgh. And, and in fact, we've had some, some of the government officials of Pittsburgh that have called us and said, would y'all take an interest in our area, which I think is pretty incredible. Can anybody say amen to that? Yeah, I think it's incredible, incredible stuff. 
we got another small group that's been meeting down at Depot Park. And, and just for those who don't have wheels in downtown Sanford that couldn't come here and, and, and can't drive. And so we got a group of people that's interested. Uh, Sherry is leading that and, and doing an incredible job and just reaching out to those that are in that area. And we envision maybe one day having a downtown Sanford campus for people who couldn't drive here but could walk to church. Because come on, somebody knows downtown Sanford needs some Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. So, so, so this is the vision, and this is what God's called us to do, is to be a launching pad. And so, so that's what this church is about, and that's what we're trying to do. And, and, and so I want to just bring you up to speed on a few things real quick, as quickly as I can, and, and let you know about a few things that are going to be happening. We've been talking about this for several years. We've been talking about our name. See, Stanley Chapel is an incredible name if you're in Sanford. But when you're not in Sanford, you call people outside and say, where do you go to church? I go to Stanley Chapel. They say, Family Chapel? Not Family Chapel, Stanley Chapel. Oh, Stanley Chapel. No, not Stanley Chapel, you know, because it makes sense here. You know, we got Stanley Park and Stanley Middle and, San, you know, Stanley Security. We got so many Stanleys around here, but it doesn't make sense outside of here. So as we branch out, that becomes a little bit of a stumbling block. And so um, one of the things that we've been talking about is the need that we probably were going to need to change our name at some point in our history. In fact, we talked about that a few years ago. Um, we were getting ready to do it in, Jan in February of 2016. The, the, the church met and decided that that's what we would do. And uh, it's interesting enough that Brother Earl Norris, our founding pastor, he was able to come to that meeting and he stood up and he said, when I started this church, I was concerned about Sanford, but God has given us a bigger vision. We should change our name to fit our bigger vision. Amen. Thank God for a 90-some-year-old man who doesn't lose what it's all about. Can we just honor him by giving him and Sister Della a hand right now? Incredible, incredible people, incredible people. But because of some things going on at the Western Hornet campus, we weren't sure what was going to happen, what the future was going to be. We decided to put that in a timeout and kind of hold just a second, and let's see what was going to happen until we could launch. And now we've, we've launched. And so now we recognize that it's time to probably continue moving forward with that name change. Here's why. It's because there's better stewardship. When we have duplicate names, we have to do two. Every time we do T-shirts, we have to do two setup models. Every time we do gra uh, uh, invite cards, we have to do two with the things. We have to do two with everything's two. We have to do we're paying for two websites and two, two everything. And so it, it becomes a, a little bit of a costly endeavor to maintain two names. The other thing is that whenever we do the big mailer in January and advertise to the community of Western Harnet and they see that one San Lee and one Life Springs, it's just too confusing. And, and it, it's, it's hard for them to understand, are we... You know, how is it connected to San Lee and what does it even look like? And it's a little bit shady. <laughs> I would be a little bit nervous about that if I was them. The other reason is because it increases unity. We really are one church just in two locations. In fact, many of the people that are right now in this auditorium that, that have visited Life Springs and go back and forth and the pastors have, we really are one church. Come on, somebody say amen to that. And God blesses unity, and so we want to make sure that everybody knows that. And, and the other thing is Life Spring has a spiritual meaning to it, and, and San Lee don't. It's a great geography name, but Life Spring speaks of life. And Jesus said that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that you might have, anybody want to guess? You might have life and have it to the full. And we just, he said he was, a, he, was he just birthed life. And, and in fact, I, I want to preach a message about that when we get closer in. And God's really given me a, a, a heart for that name and what he's about. He's always been about life. And so this name fits the vision and fits what God has called us to do. Uh, our, our vision is for Lee County and what? And so, so here's the way that's going to look. Here's how it's going to kind of look. And this is not a you know, terribly uh, fancy graphic or anything, but I want you to understand what it means. So for those of you who go to the San Lee campus, you say, I can't tell people I go to San Lee no more. Yes, you can tell people we go to San Lee. What happens is the overall banner of our church is Life Springs Church, and we have different campuses. So we have life, we, are, we are Life Springs Church, and we have the San Lee campus, which is where, I, where, where we broadcast from. This is where I'm live at, the San Lee campus, and we have the Western Harnett campus, which is the one that meets at Western Harnett High School. No matter if we get land or whatever, it'll still be Western Harnett. And if one day God gives us a Pittsburgh campus, then we'll have a Pittsburgh campus, and then we'll have a downtown San... Y'all getting the drift? Everybody say amen, all right? So, so you can still tell people you come to San Lee, you go to the San Lee campus of Life Springs Church. Everybody got it? If you got it, say got it. 
good. That's, that's where we're headed. Now, I don't know. Um, it'll probably take years for that to happen. I've been a part of Stanley Chapel since 1993, so I'll probably for a long time say, hello, my name is Dale. I'm the lead pastor of Stanley Chapel, and then I'll say Life Springs Church, and it will feel like I'm calling my new girlfriend by my old girlfriend's name. But we'll just have to get over that for a little while. All right, so it'll take years to kind of get that down. You know, it'll take, it'll take years to get that. Um, but, but we're beginning to process now because we'd like to have that legally in place by uh, January the 7th. And so that's, that's the goal. So you're going to be seeing it and hearing it and all that. Now, here's the deal. When God gives you a call to go there, you can't stay here and go there at the same time. Does that make sense to you? You, you can't... And, and how many of you believe that God has sent Stanley Chapel? Hold your hands and Life Springs Church. Hold your hands up good and high. But then if he has sent us, then that by the very nature of that means we have to go. Now, if you would like to be a part of this vision, if you like what you're hearing right now, if you're like, man, I want to give my life to that, how can I get involved? Well, there are several ways you can get involved. One way you can get involved is you can pray that we as a church live sent because the devil is trying his best to stop us. And he is mad, and we have, as one of our staff members said, we have stepped into his world and claiming the people he thought he had claimed. Amen. And he's mad. So you can pray. Second thing you can do is you might want to consider helping build one of these campuses. We're going to be launching from time to time for geography, geographical places, orientations, and there'll be groups that'll sign up that say you can be a part of this you know, campus launch team and that launch team or this group that's forming a launch team or whatever else. In fact, we're still wanting people to help us with the Western Hornet Campus. So if you're interested in doing that, meet me here right now. Take out your prayer card and write on the back of it, Western Hornet. If you're not a part of that launch team, uh, meet me here at 1 o'clock on November the 12th. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about it. It's the uh, way it is. And, and some of it is uh, me uh, preaching via video. Some of it's Pastor Justin preaching live, and he and I both hope to be here on the 12th and just tell you how that works and what's going on. So if you're interested in learning more, you make no commitments by coming. You just learn more. Write on the back of your prayer card, LSC orientation, or either just write orientation. We'll know exactly. If you can't spell orientation, put Western Harnet. If you can't spell Harnet, just put WH. <laughs> just trying to keep it simple here. The last thing you can do is if, if you've not already done this, I would like to encourage you to become a giver. And, and so really what this started out to be is a financial uh, challenge. And it's grown past that, but it still has at the heart of it a, a, a giving challenge. So if you look at the seat back in front of you, you'll see a Grow 2020. It might say Grow 2.0. That was the old name. We changed it. It should say Grow 2020 Challenge. And, um, and, and here's, here's what I want what you do is consider if you're not a tither, become a tither. The Bible talks a lot about tithing. It talks a lot about giving 10% of your income. And if you would check that, just drop it off at the corner store or, or at, at Life Springs at your corner store. Drop that off, and, and they'll give you a T-shirt, a Grow 2020 T-shirt, and, and they'll give you a little bracelet that you can wear just to remind you of the commitment that you made. So that's the first rung. The second rung is if you already are a tither and you're like, I want to be involved on a different level. God's not called me to go, but he's called me to sin. So, so here's what I want to encourage you to do is to increase your tithe. Uh, increase your tithe by 2% and just, just increase it. Just, that's, what, that's what we did several years ago. And I'm not going to ask you to do something I didn't do myself. I, I increased, we increased ours. Melissa and I did it by 4%. So I'm just, I mean, just, just give. Just, just increase it by 2%. Then there's a third way that you, or third level that you can get involved. It's called Kingdom Builders. It's a ministry team of people who have the gift of giving. And they just, we pick projects and we're just kind of getting that off the ground. And we pick projects and we fund those projects. And if you're a kind of person who's like, I just want to give. I just love to give. And I just get a kick out of giving. I think it's my gift to give. Then come to our Kingdom Builders. The next Kingdom Builders meeting will be on September, I mean, not September. What a month are we in? November the 19th. November the 19th at 1 o'clock. And uh, if you're interested in that, just write KB, if you can't write Kingdom Builder, on your prayer card, all right? And, uh, and give it on your way out. So uh, that's how you can be involved. Everybody understand what I'm talking about? If so, say yes. yes. How many of you are excited about what this church, what God has called us to do? Come on. Anybody excited in here at Life Springs? You excited about that? I'm thrilled about that. 
So let's get going. We're in a series called Faith. Say it with me. One, two, three. Faith in action. And the whole premise of the series is that God has called us to be people of faith. That we walk not by sight, but we walk by faith. And the faith that he's called us to have is a faith that is to be put into action. And the interesting thing is that even unbelievers believe that. One of the things that unbelievers get so frustrated by in the church is we talk a good talk, but we don't always walk a good walk. And so they want a church that's going to do something. And I love our church because our, our church serves this community incredibly. Can anybody, can, can y'all amen that? Is, have you noticed that? Done an incredible things. But I've asked you, let's do something bigger than we've ever done. Because we, oh, that's the way we are. We just, we just try to go strong or go home, you know, right? And so we're just doing something bigger than we've ever done. And I've asked you to make these commitments that if you've not gone to Grow Track, that you go to Grow Track and get out of the woodwork of this church and become a part of this church. Just get involved. Join a small group. Join a ministry team or at least learn about it even if you don't join it just go to grow track and let us help you learn how to live a christian life and let's just get past the uh, whole uh, you know this th- just listening to sermons and really just get connected and so the, you can do that the first sunday of november just sign up and be a part of that the second the second thing i ask you to do is to take the scent challenge and there should be cards at both campuses where you're reaching out to at least one person and you're being intentional in a relationship with somebody that's far from God. And we're giving you suggested things to check off and a way online for you to be a part of it. So at any campus, you should be able to get that scent card. I'm carrying mine in my bag and I'm praying about that and I'm, 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 I'm aggressively looking at how we're going to go, how I'm personally going to implement that. It's probably going to take me a little time because I've got to get in relationship with somebody. But in, so it may take you some time, but don't let it go. I'm asking you to do that. Second, third thing I've asked you to do is I've asked you to serve this month. Best way to find out what's going on around here is, um, is write it on your prayer card. If you say, I'd like to serve, and somebody will get in touch with you. Or go to our Facebook page, the Stanley Chapel Facebook page, and, uh, and a lot of announcements, a lot of ways that you can get involved. I've asked you to serve this month in a bigger way than you've ever served. And then I've asked you on... Uh, I, I keep wanting to say this is September. I'm just, I can't get out of that. Anyway... This is November. Okay, on November the 9th and the 12th, we're going to hopefully take the biggest offering that we've ever taken in the history of this church. And so there's a, there's a uh, he's calling a house because Kenya, the government in Kenya will not let him call it an orphanage. But they are, they've got 80, it's a house they're building that will house 80 orphans. 80 orphans. And, uh, and, and they've got, they've, they're, they're, right now the house they have, they have 25 orphans and 50s on a waiting list. And, and these orphans will stay in this home until they're 19, or as he puts it, uh, Benjamin, Pastor Benjamin Nakuka said, he said, or until they're responsible. <laughs> I was like, that ain't going to happen at 19. But anyway, <laughs> and he said the smarter ones can go stay here longer if they go to college, and then we're going to hopefully get them to college, and they're going to have a job, and then they can help fund the orphanage. And Benjamin uh, went there just a few years ago and planted a church, and we helped him. Stanley Chapel helped him build a 1,200-seat auditorium just a few years ago, and they're already filling that up. So I have no doubt in my mind that the anointing of God is on him to do an incredible work. And we're going to be a part of that. They've raised, they need $100,000 for this house. They're gonna, they're gonna, they, they've raised 75000 and we're going to try to help them as much as we can with the 25000 So on, on, on November the 9th and 12th, we're going to give away everything that's given here that weekend. So go ahead and dig deep and give the biggest offering we've ever given. We're going to deduct all the service things that we did in the month of November from that offering we're gonna and then we're gonna spread it out among about two to three organizations and uh, and and i'll let you know about it when we get closer today about some of the other organizations but one of them is that orphanage so how many of you plan to give on on the ninth and the twelfth hold your hands up good and high good 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 i want you to and i want to let this make a big impact now today what i want to talk to you about i talked to you about uh faith in action and then i talked to you about being courageous and and that we had to be courageous and today i want to talk to you about being generous and it's, it's misspelled, but anyway, it's, uh, it's, it's misspelled. But I'm talking to you about generous. Some people can't even spell generous, you know, right? Here's why I want to talk to you about generosity is because, watch this, this is Thanksgiving month here in November, and thanks and giving always go together. In fact, here's your Life Spring shirt, Stanley Chapel, social media moment. God wants the blessed to bless. 
God, the whole reason he blessed you was because he wants you to be a blessing. Because, see, that's the natural income, uh, natural outcome. Thanks and giving always go together. One time we were coming back from camping, and my camper, uh, we, I had a camper at the time, and the camper tire, uh, you know, the bearings went out in the tire. And there was a man at the gas station who stopped, and he pulled over, and he stayed right there with me until uh, Mr. Mr. Jimmy Wester, part of our church family who's here, he came and helped me. But this man stayed right there with me, got grease all over his head, didn't leave me and my family, did, went overboard to try to help me, didn't even know him. Well, I found out where the man worked, and you know what? We took him a big basket, we took him there, because why? When you're grateful, you want to give. That's the whole message of Thanksgiving. That's the way it all went down. That's the whole, and 396 years ago, the pilgrims decided that they would have a day in the fall that would celebrate the harvest that God had given to them and that God had given them so much stuff. And so what they decided to do is the, the way to say thanks to God was to give and they called it what? Thanks. Because thanks and giving go together. And it wasn't original. It's a natural thing. When you're really, truly grateful, you're truly thankful, that's the natural outcome. In fact, it's, it's, it's kind of what Jesus, what, what God, well, all the way through the Bible, God called for these kind of things. In fact, here's one of the festivals. He said, then celebrate the festival of harvest. Say festival of harvest. It's kind of like a Thanksgiving that we're celebrating this harvest that we have. And how are we going to celebrate? We're going to celebrate to honor the Lord your God. How are we going to celebrate? By bringing him a voluntary offering. Say voluntary offering. offering. Nobody's making you do it. It's just, I'm just so grateful for what God has done for me. Can I get a witness up in here? And so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give because of that in in proportion to the blessing that you've received from him. So so if you've not been blessed by God, don't worry about giving him thanks. But how many of you you say that God's blessed you? Hold your hands up good and high. He's been good to you. He's been good to me. And he says, he said, I want you to give. And this is the time to celebrate before the Lord your God at the designated place of worship. So there's always this worship that's going to be involved. He will choose for his name to be honored. Celebrate with your sons and your daughters. So bring them along. Your, your male and female servants. You know, your, your, the, the Levites from your towns and the foreigners, orphans, widows who live among you. Translation. Everybody. I want everybody to celebrate a voluntary offering. Why? Because thanks and giving go together. Say it with me. Thanks and giving go together. The Bible says it over and over and over. And the more you have been blessed, he said, bring the offering in proportion. Say in proportion. The more you have been blessed, the more you need to bless. Does that make sense to you? How many of you don't it make sense that if you've been given more, you ought to be more grateful? Hold your hands up good and high. And the way we show our gratitude is thanks and what? Thanks and giving go together every time. Now, because of that, I want to look, turn over into the New Testament. I'd like to look at a simple verse that I'm, I hope not to preach too long about, but it's a verse that is, I discovered here a few years ago. And I've preached this several times in this church because I want to say it till we get it. It's not going to be a popular sermon probably, but I want to say it till we get it because this is very important. There's, a, there's only three verses here that I want to look at, and it's within, it's, it was written by the Apostle Paul, who I think is very unique, and that's one reason I like to study this verse because the Apostle Paul was a rich man, but when he became a follower of Jesus Christ, he lost it all. And so he knows how rich people think, but he'd also been on the poor side of that, and he knew how poor people think. And so he's, he's coaching a young pastor in this passage. He's talking to a young man named Timothy, and he's mentoring him, and he's telling Timothy how to pastor rich people. And, and he's telling him, look, you got a bunch of rich people in your church, and I want to tell you how to talk to them. I want to tell you how to respond to them. I want to tell you how to lead the rich people in your church. And here's the way he starts out in 1 Timothy 6. He says, command, say command, command Command those who are rich. Now, how do you command rich people? Think about the richest person that's in Lee County or Western Harnett or whatever, and you go to them, it's just going to start bossing them around. That don't go too good. I'm already lost right there. Command those who are rich in this present world. Say, in this present world. Because it is very possible that you'll be rich in the next world, but you're not rich in this world. Amen. So the very, we're, we're talking about people who are rich in this world. 
this present world. And I feel the need that I need to clarify this because some of you are going to sit here today and you're going to say, preach it to the rich people, Dale. <laughs> and I need to clarify who the rich person is. Who's the rich? How many of you are rich? Hold your hands up. I'd like to see you after the service. You know, right? It's a, got a few things I need to talk to you about. No, truthfully, everybody should. In fact, ready? This is the last statistics I have. If you make $25,000 a year, I'm not going to have you raise your hand. $25,000 a year, almost like $2,000 a month, you are within 2% of the richest people in the world. If you make $25,000 I mean $25, a year, there are 98% of the world's population poorer than you. If you make $35,000 a year, you're in the top 0.81, 99 point something people are poorer than you are. If you make $55,000 a year, you're in the top one quarter of a percent, 99.75% of the rest of the world is poorer than you. Look at the person beside of you and say, make it rain. Make it rain. Come on. <laughs> Thought you'd never hear that in church, did you? We got coin, baby. We got coin, and that's the good news. And so here's the thing. How many of you have some problems? Hold your hands up good and high. Your problems are rich people problems. But I, I'm just going to give you some of my saw right here. So you're telling me, this boy says, that you have fights with water and not over it? <laughs> my diamond earrings keep scratching my iPhone. <laughs> Come on, y'all tracking with me, somebody? Y'all got it right now, right? Y'all got this ready? So you're telling me you drive to the gym to walk on a treadmill? I want to eat before I go to bed, but I don't want to brush my teeth again. That's a rich person's problem. I had too much food for lunch, and now I'm tired. Come on, anybody can relate? Amen. Amen. That's a rich person's problem. Everybody track it with me right now? Watch this. I want to adjust the temperature, but my thermostat's busy downloading an update. That's a rich person's problem. I want to ride with, I, I want to ride with my convertible top down, but when I do, I can't hear the music. This is rich people problem. One more, ready? Forget. Uh, forgot I was watching a recording and I sat through the commercials. <laughs> All right, here's the deal. Ready? When your problems start with, Dale, my heat and, my heat and air. When you start your sentence with my heat and air, that's a rich people's problem. Wow. When you start to say, Dale, I can't pay my water bill. That's a rich people's problem. You don't believe it? Travel outside the United States. Anybody ever done that? If so, say amen, right? Them, I can't pay the mechanic. That's a rich people's problem. Them, my electric bill. That's a rich people's problem. You see, we're, compared to what my cell phone. Hey, watch this. My health care. Go roll up at Nicaragua. That's where we want to take a mission trip. And you start talking about your health care problems and see what they do. See, so they'll show you some problems. Come on, somebody. Am I, am I making sense to you right now? If so, say amen. This is, so so, so the, the purpose of me going through all this is not to make you feel bad, but I just want you to understand when you come across in the Bible, command those who are rich, he's talking about us. We're one of the richest countries in the world, and we're certainly richer than the people who wrote this in the environment. Can we all admit right now, compared to what's going on in history and the rest of the world, we're doing pretty well. Come on, anybody? We're blessed. Can anybody say amen to that? 
we are blessed. And so, so, so when he's talking about rich people, you're comparing yourself with other Americans and you don't feel so rich. But when you get outside of your little bubble and look at the rest of the world and get out of the narrow world, it puts it in perspective. So now, because of that, the only, I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. God blessed us, and I thank God he has. And he don't want us to feel bad for the blessings he's given to us. But he wants us to be responsible with the blessings he's given us. So the whole purpose is not to heap guilt on anybody. The whole purpose is to help us understand who we are so that when we read things like this in the Bible, we'll know he's talking to us. Command those who are rich in this present world, what is it? Not to be arrogant because that's a temptation for rich people. Nor to put their hope in wealth, which that's a natural temptation for rich. We start thinking all about money and we will skip church to make money and we'll freak out when, you know, here's how you know. If I told you there was no God or if I told you you had no more money, which would freak you out more? Don't put your hope in wealth, which is so uncertain and everybody who's known that said amen, right? But to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our so listen, don't feel guilty about being blessed. God blessed you because he wants you to enjoy it. Amen. Isn't that good news? Yeah. So you don't need to feel guilty about buying a steak unless you don't invite your pastor. <laughs> That's the problem. You just, he, he blessed you for your enjoyment, but he said, he said, don't put your trust in riches. And then he goes on. He says, he says command them, talking about the rich people, to do good. Say do good. He didn't. See, this is what you thought preachers were supposed to do. You thought preachers were supposed to be commanding you to be good. He didn't tell you to be good. The rest of the Bible tells you to be good. He says, command the rich people to what? Do good. I want you to, it's not about being good. I want you to actually do something with the riches that I gave you. And in case you can't smell what he's stepping in, in case you can't pick up what he's putting down, he breaks it down for those of us that are a little slow. Any slow people in here say amen. Say amen, Daniel. He says, command him to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share. And we will come back and talk about that, but just let that sink in. Say, rich in good deeds. Come on, life spring. Say, rich in good deeds. Ready? Rich in good deeds and say, willing to share. Ready? Willing to share. Now notice what else he says. In this way, they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation in the coming age. See, he's been talking about rich in the present age, but he says if you're doing those things I just said, you're going to lay up treasures for yourself in the what? The coming age. So it's going to get better for you in heaven by doing this so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. So, so I'm going to give you the road to the good life, he says. I'm going to tell rich people who are chasing the good life how to get a hold of the good life. Now, let me break it down. Here's what he said. How do you do good? He, he told us how to do good. Number one, he said, serve generously. So if you're taking notes, fill in your blank. Serve generously. To be rich in good deeds. That's what he said. To be rich in good deeds. To serve generously. Generously. He said, I want you to tell them rich people not to be average good, but to be rich people good. Not to be like, I helped this, this lady was walking across the street and she tripped and I helped her up. No, nah, no, nah, I held this door for the older company. No, nah, for this older company. That's average good. I want rich people to be rich people good. Because see, here's what Paul knew that you're going to push back on because we have such a first world problems that we think about. But Paul knew something about rich people that you're going to resist, but it's absolutely true. And that is that rich people have extra time. You say, no, I don't have extra time. We don't feel like we have extra time. And here's why we don't feel like we have extra time is because we're rich. And so, but, but, but listen, let me just say this. We have extra time compared to what's going on in the world. You get, most of you get two days off a week. Not all of you, but most of you get two days off a week. You get a certain number of vacation days. That, let me tell you what that means. That means people will pay you to do nothing. That is unheard of in the rest of the world. You go tell them, I only got three weeks vacation at my work. You get paid even when you don't show up? Come on, am I making sense to you? 
This is that. Now, now you say, well, Dale, why do, I, why do I feel like I don't have any free time? Because here's the deal. Ready? Rich people don't feel like they have good free time because we have options because we're rich. And so when we have a vacation day, we can do something on our vacation. We can go to the movies, we can go to the beach, we can go somewhere. Do, when we have the weekend off, we can mow our grass because we got, a, we got grass. We can do our lawn, we can do our laundry, we can, we can go shopping, we can buy groceries for, because we have options. Come on, anybody tracking with me? And he said, listen, I, I want you, and statistically rich people serve less than, than, than the rest of the world. He says, Timothy, I want you to understand, just because they're rich people in your church don't mean they're going to serve a lot more. You're going to have to command them rich people to serve. You, you, they need to be rich in good deeds because if you don't, rich people will stay so busy with their own world and their own life. Come on, am I preaching all right? Amen. That they will not pay attention to anybody else and what they need. Because rich people will tend to get self-consumed. So Timothy... When you're talking to rich people, you got rich people in your church, I want you to tell them over and over, it's not about me. It's not about you. And if that won't convince, convict it enough, he says, and then I want you, how do you do good? You serve generously and you give generously. And tell them to be generous and willing to share. I want you to tell them that they need to share their stuff. And you say, well, I share. I buy raffle tickets. And anytime there's a benefit, I, I go to the, I, I buy me a plate of food at the benefit. And, and I take all my junk that ain't, got, that ain't good and faded and got holes in it, and I take it to the thrift store. You know, I do. I mean, I really do. All the stuff, instead of throwing away, I take it to the thrift store. <laughs> That's average good. That's not rich people good. We live in a culture that is rich in options. And so we are always having, the, the reason we don't feel rich is because uh, even though we are in the top world's population, some of the richest people in the world, we don't feel rich because we live in a society that there's always something else to wear. Come on, anybody, right? There's always something else to listen to. There's always something else to buy. There's always something else to drive. Come on, right? There's people with masters and doctorates and PhDs in marketing that are sitting in a room strategizing ways to make you dissatisfied with what you have. They're sitting in a room thinking of ways to get you thinking that what you got ain't good enough and you need to get something else. Because, see, you know the fine art of shopping is, right? It's to buy stuff you don't need with money you don't have to impress people you don't even like. So what happens is we sit there and we want a new one. And so we pencil and we get our pen out and we're thinking and we're strategizing and we do. And, our, and we ha, honey, I figured it out. If we'll just not eat lunch two days a week. We can have one. <laughs> and we strategize how to buy a new one and how to get it, right? Can I ask you a question? When's the last time have you ever spent that much mental energy trying to figure out how you could give more? Honey, I figured out how we could increase our giving. <laughs> God says, listen, don't just be average rich. Be, 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 be above average rich. You know, study shows that rich people actually give less money a lot of times in percentage, but also in amount. It's just, it's sad. Rich people, he says, I want you to understand, Paul says, I want you to understand because I was rich. Rich people are not naturally generous. And, and the reason why is not because they're mean. They're, it's just, they're naturally selfish. And the reason why is because they're se that they have a lot of options. And Timothy, I want you to don't assume that they're going to be, that's because they have more means they're going to give more. Because when they have more, they can always go to a ball game and they can go to a, they can go out to dinner and they can go, they can do things. And, and so because of that, the temptation's gonna be that they're gonna get on monthly payments and they're gonna get all this, they're gonna get so much going on, they're gonna join all these clubs and join all this stuff that they will have no time and no money to give to anybody else. Come on, am I am I making sense? If so, say amen, right? You know the interesting thing for those of you who are like not sure about the Bible, I love the Bible because it's still relevant today. Do y'all think this is pretty relevant today? If so, say amen. This is, this is hard. So he's saying, don't assume. Now, here's the thing. The truth of the matter is, this is hard. This is, this is very, very hard for us to do. Because who says, you know, hey, I don't, I mean, who says, I got the next three days off. What am I going to do? Said no one ever, right? When was the last time you said, I got all this money. What am I going to do? Said no one ever, right? 
because we don't feel like we have extra time. We don't feel like we have extra money. So if, but, but yet we know, according to the rest of the world, we are in the rich category. So how do we apply this practically? What do we do to, to, to make sure that we aren't guilty of what, the, what God says to the Apostle Paul, rich people tend to be guilty of? Everybody interested? If so, say amen. amen. Here's how. Ready? Amen. Application. Advanced decision making. Advanced decision-making will prevent you from giving God leftovers. Because, see, ready? If you invite somebody over for dinner, you, you don't say, hey, come over to my house. And when they get there, you, you say, I, you know, well, I hadn't really thought much about what we're going to eat. So let me look in the refrigerator. We got some peas. We got peas from the other night. You want some peas? I mean, you don't do that. Leftovers, leftovers are not for guests. Leftovers, if you invited some celebrity to your house, you wouldn't give them leftovers. Leftovers are for who? They're for your family, Right? Somebody's like, no, they're for the trash can. <laughs> or maybe you're in my house, there ain't no leftovers. I got a 13-year-old. And then, then you got me. Anyway, there ain't, there ain't, there ain't no leftovers. So, so here's what will happen, though. If you're not careful, if you consume all the food in your house and somebody comes to visit, and all you've got to do is give them leftovers. And if you don't pre-decide when somebody, we've got a guest coming to our house this weekend, we'll pre-decide on what we want to feed them, and we'll go buy the food and we'll prepare the food because we made an intentional decision before the event. Come on, somebody. Y'all tracking with me? So the only way we're going to keep ourselves from being self-centered and not being and, and 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 not being giving and not being serving, not being generous is if is if we predecide. That's the only way. Is we've got to make some decisions in advance. So I'm going to talk to you about what that is. Number one, decide in advance where to invest your time. Decide in advance. This is where I'm going to put my my time. And then you find an organization or two that you believe in, and and and. Um, Say, I'm going to give a slice of my life to them. It's okay to be spontaneous, but the thing about being, you see, some of you think, well, I'm generous because I tell people all the time, if y'all need me, call me. Have y'all noticed that most people don't call you when they need you? So you've got to be intentional. Go find an organization or two and plan ahead and say, you know what? I have, I have three weeks of vacation. I'm going, to, I'm going to spread some of that out. I'm going to give one week away to serve. I get two days off on the weekend. I'm going to give, I'm going to give a few hours of that every weekend away. I, I, get, um, I get this. We got four long weekends this year. I'm going, to, I'm going to keep three of them for me and my family. And we're going to give one long weekend to a mission trip somewhere or whatever. You decide. Here we go. Ready? Decide when you can serve who you want to serve, and where you want to serve. Decide when, who, and where. Because if you don't decide up front, let me tell you what's going to happen. The same thing's going to happen to you that's going to happen to me. You're going to get to the end of your life. Listen, this is big. And you will have eaten in some nice restaurants. You will have seen some good movies, some okay movies, and some really not good movies. You have binged a lot on Netflix. You've been on some okay vacations, some medium vacations, some great vacations. But you have absolutely nothing to show for your time. Nobody will be in heaven because of it. And can we all agree that's not a position we want to be in? Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. So you got to pre-decide. Say pre-decide. You need to make a commitment. Go to Growth Track. If it's here you want to serve, if you believe in this organization, then that's fine. And let me tell you what I do. What I do, I, 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 this is what I do. My family does. We serve here. This, we believe in the church. I believe the church is the only hope for the world. Amen. I really do. I, I was hoping for a stronger amen. I'm going to try it again. Maybe some of you were asleep. I believe the church is the only hope for the world. Amen. We can do more for the divorce rate. We can do more for... Mass murderers, we could do more by just winning our neighbors to Jesus. So, so my family's committed to giving a lot of our time to the church. But we believe in other organizations too. So like, for instance, I volunteer, I serve at the CUOC. I, I believe in that organization. They do a great job. We serve in Family Promise. Some. We, we serve around town and other things. So, so I, I want you to serve on a ministry team, but I want you to serve, another, serve on Crisis Pregnancy. Reach out Crisis Pregnancy Center. Serve in other places as well. Not just here. So you, you got to pre-decide. Say pre-decide. Predecide what do your time and predecide what you're gonna do with your money. It, it, you know, just like you predecide to have a 401k that every month X number of dollars comes out of your paycheck and goes into a 401k, then you do the same thing when it comes to your money. Say this percent goes to the king to to give away because we're gonna ratchet down our lifestyle. Now that's a 
that percent, if, if you're making 10%, you know, if you're making $100 a week and it's $10 a week, it don't seem like that big a deal. If you start making $1,000 a week and it starts being $100 a, a week, it's like, oh, that's a little bit more. That's, you know, that's $5,200. But then when you start making more than that, you start looking at the amount, it'll mess you up. So you do a percentage and say, this is the percentage. And don't give it spontaneous. You saw some picture of a kid that was hungry. And so, I mean, that's fine. You can do that. But the problem with it is, if you don't plan it, you'll spend it. Can anybody? Amen. If you don't plan it, you'll spend it. You're like me. If it's in there, you're going to spend it one way or the other, right? So decide, I'm going to give this percentage away right off the top because I don't want to be guilty of wasting my life. Because thanks and giving, what happens to them? They go together. And so I'm so grateful for the way God has blessed me. I'm going to decide a percentage, and I'm going to give, and I'm going to ratchet down my lifestyle. You say, well, if I would keep that, I could buy a new car. I know, but you got a car. We're going to ratchet. If I, if I would keep that, I could buy a new iPhone. Well, I'm a, I know, but you got an iPhone. We're going to ratchet down our, if I get, we could go on bigger vacations. I know, but you got time off now that you could, you know, you could ratchet down your lifestyle and say, I'm going to live within it. Here's what Melissa and I do. I taught this for years in this church, and so some of you, I hope, are, are telling me, I know you are, you don't hope, you tell me you do, you do this as well. I, I encourage you to become a percentage giver, that Melissa and I, we make a decision, and actually our whole family, this is the percentage of our income that we're going to give away, and that's just, it's unquestionable, we decide that's the percentage. It's a priority, you decide, when am I going to give this away? Now for us, uh, we get paid, uh, we get paid, we do the work and then we get paid. So, like, we get paid on the for, for what we did from the 1st to the 15th, we get paid on the 15th. And then what we do from the 15th to the 30th, we get paid on the 30th. So we get paid the 15th and the 30th for what we've done. What we do, my, my family, is the very first check we write or send electronically is, is right there on the 15th. Because we just, it's just, God says, bring the tithe into the storehouse off the top. I don't want to give God leftovers. Can anybody say amen to that? And so we've decided the percentage, and it's a priority. You say, well, what if I can't pay? Maybe I should wait and see if I can pay my bills. Now, I don't think that shows the faith. Come on, anybody right? Because the Bible says if you seek ye first the kingdom of God, then you see where order is restored, blessings are released. That's true in your household. Right now, if order would get restored in your household, blessings would get released. If the man would step up and be the man of the house that he's supposed to be. Now, I'm about to preach right up here. Y'all better, y'all better I, I got to get off of that. But, 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 but the priority is important. Where order is restored. Say, where order is restored. Ready? Where order is restored, blessing is released. Say, blessing is released. Blessing is released. So, so that's the way we, a percentage, a, a priority, and then progressive. Every year we increase our giving. And, and some, some years we increase it by a couple of percent, and some years we increase it by a half a percent. Just depends on, but every year, we for years and years and years and years, we've just increased our giving every single year. And, and we give the 10% to, to the church, and then we give the other percentage wherever we want to, whatever we want to do with it. We just give it away. Like if we see a widow that we feel like needs help, or we see somebody, or we see an organization, or we sponsor some kids, and that are our kids' ages for Compassion International, that we just monthly sponsor them. And, and I'm not telling you any of this, like, look at me or anything. I'm trying to be a pastor to say, listen, I'm trying to show you this is the way we apply this because what I don't want to do, and, and, and that number gets bigger. I mean, we've been doing that for years, and so that's a pretty big number. We look at that number sometimes, we're like, man, you know what we could do with that? But we don't even get tempted with it because why? We've been blessed. Come on. Amen. Been ble How many of you have been blessed? Hold your hands up good and high, right? Then, then, then thanks and giving go together, right? Has you ever heard that before? Thanks and get. Paul says, you tell those rich people, you tell them rich people, don't let the extra get sucked up on themselves. And, uh, and, and so I, I want you to learn to be a giver. Now, I will say this, and I'm going to move out, out of this, but I want to say this. I, I firmly believe that some of your time and some of your money, a big portion of it needs to be given to the church. Here's why. That's the bride of Christ. That's what's doing the work of God on earth. You say, well, I believe in saving the animals. I think that's great. You should save the animals. I believe in finding a cure for cancer. I think that's great. You should do that. But I'm telling you something. If the church don't succeed, our society's in trouble. Amen. So I, I firmly believe. You say, well, I want to fund politicians. That's, you do whatever you want to do. But I'm telling you, you better take a percentage of it and fund the things that God's interested in. 
You say, Dale, you're doing that because you're trying to raise money for the church. Then don't even give it here. Give it to a church you believe in then, that you trust. In fact, I'll tell you this. If you give here, and after six months God hadn't blessed you, we'll refund back what you gave. How about that? I'm just telling you. Fund the things God cares about. Come on, anybody believe that? Fund the things God cares about. So uh, I just want to do something right quick. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit... Um, uh, I get a little bit weak sometimes, and I knew I had to do this Grow 2020 thing, and I knew I'd get a little, take a little break right here. And eat a donut hole. I love donut holes. You like donut holes? Who likes donut holes? Am I like donut? This is ooh, this is carrot cake donut hole. Yeah, this is good. You, you like donut holes? You do? Come here, come on. You like donut holes? Come on up here. This is good. I bet y'all went live streams. Wish you could see this, smell this donut hole. Donut hole. Yeah. Smell that right there. Just what, t- tell everybody your name. Tell everybody your name. Sit right here. Hunter. Hunter. What's your last name, Hunter? Godfrey. Godfrey. You like donut holes? Yeah. Smell that. Don't that, that smells good, don't it? <laughs> I just want to. You got, do they buy you donut holes sometimes? Do they give you donut holes? They do. You like them? Yeah, they're good. I like them too. Um, and it's funny, you don't have any. And I have a five right here. This is chocolate. Um, I really, I really, really like. The, he likes Hunter likes donut holes too. And um, and now whenever you had more than one thing growing up, and you know, and your parents saw you had more than one thing, what did they say? Well, your mama didn't say. I have a sister. She never, my mama never said, Dale, hurry up and eat that before your sister gets here. She's going to want some of it. <laughs> your mom, if your mama did that, she's a terrible mama. You know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> and yeah, I got, um, I got donut holes and you don't have any. And that's weird. I'll tell you what I want to do. You want some donut holes probably, don't you? That's why you came up here. And um, how many of you would like to see Hunter get some donut holes? Come on over here, Hunter. Come on over here. Come on over here. So here's what I want y'all to do, if y'all don't mind. Let's just pray that Hunter gets some donut holes. <laughs> Father, give me a sec. I got to swallow this. Father, in the name of Jesus, Hunter wants some donut holes, and I have donut holes, and I love my donut holes, and, and God, I just want him to be blessed like I'm blessed. And I don't, I don't want to be the only one blessed. So God, in the name of Jesus, just see fit to give Hunter some donut holes in the name of Jesus. And everybody believes him. Come on, say, say amen, right? Amen. Hey, listen, don't, believe, don't, don't give up believing, Hunter. Okay, listen, you got to believe to achieve, man. You understand what I'm saying? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you just have faith. You got to have faith. Don't give up, okay? Now, now, what are y'all saying? What are y'all thinking? <laughs> How many of you feel like you want to walk up here and punch me in the throat right now for not giving him a donut? Oh, now, see, here's the thing. Watch this. You're aggravated at me. Because I'm eating this in front of him, and he wants some. And this little boy right here, he little boy, you, how old are you? you 11. 11 years old, and you want a donut hole, and I'm standing here eating it. But see, I got to save these. My, my, my strength gets bad, you know what I'm saying? So I, I'm going to pray for you to get some. But listen, can God, can God see everybody that's got more than one donut hole at a time? What does he think? So here's what we're going to do, Hunter. If you go over there and see Pastor Shane, i got a whole box of donut holes for you, all right? And I want you to share that with somebody over there with you, okay? You go ahead. You don't have to eat those. Go ahead. You can be seated. Give him a hand right here. Give him a hand. Here we go. Now, for those of you at Life Springs, nobody got a chance to come up here on the stage and get those, so we decided to give all of you donut holes. So all of you right now, look under your seat right now and get you, not under your seat, but somebody's going to give you a donut hole, all right, before you leave, and so you, you celebrate that since you didn't get that. Just, this campus ain't getting donut holes, so you see him say, y'all ain't got no donuts, you know, go ahead and do that. That's what goes with the spirit of sharing right there. So anyway, here we go. God looks at us and he says this, the, that, that everybody, everybody who has more than they need, the reason they have more than they need is to bless those who are in need. Wow. Isn't that right? Yes, so here, here, here's the way this works. To think that God is going to help people without the church, without the redeemed, is foolish. He's never done that. That's not his way. 
To think that God is going to do what he's going to do in our society without mankind, you will not find that anywhere in the scripture. So when I get down and I pray, God, help the homeless in my community. God, help those that are struggling. Help the addicts in my community. God, help the hungry in my community. God, I want you to help them in the name of Jesus. God said, I heard you. I heard you. Now get up and go feed them. Because see, here's the way, ready, during this disposition of time, God says, I could, I could deliver them. I could say, addict, be delivered, and they be delivered. I could say, hungry, be fed, and they be fed. I could say, homeless, here's a house, and they, be, they have a house. Because God could do that. Can anybody say amen to that? But God said, that ain't my way. That ain't how I do things. During this disposition of time, during this, disposi- during this time frame, I have blessed so the blessed can bless. I have healed so the healed can heal. I have restored so the restored can restore. I have saved so the saved can save. I have given so those who have been received can give in the name of Jesus Christ. That's how I'm going to do I have loved so the love can love. I have helped so the help can help. God blessed you because he wants you to be a blessing. It was never God's goal. For you to become a reservoir of blessing. See, that's what some of you like. God just bless me, just bless me, just bless me, just bless me. God didn't just bless you so you could be more blessed than everybody else. It was never his goal to make you a reservoir of blessing. It was his goal to make you a channel of blessing. And what I have learned is if God can get it through you, he'll get it to you. I'm just telling you. That's the way he does things. Is that he constantly works and... He will will bless you if he knows you're going to bless his cause. God does does not want you just to be hoarding it. Can can I just, right now, right now, right now, within 20 minutes of where I'm standing, where you're at right now at Life Springs, right now within 20 minutes, there's an alcoholic who every weekend swings by the ABC store and drinks all the way through the weekend. Every night when he comes home from work, he just it takes a little more, a little more. He stops by the kangaroo, gets him a lottery ticket, and a case or two of beer. Right now, right now, real time, right now, within a 20 mile minutes of where we're sitting, there's a single mom who's about to lose her mind. Those kids are bouncing off that house. They're so disrespectful. She feels like she has lost control of that home. And she is having some crazy thoughts of how to fix the situation. Right now, right now, within 20 minutes of where we're sitting, there's a kid who's listening to their parents yell and scream and curse at each other. And every night, this kid gets serenaded to sleep with that. Right now, there's a kid who every weekend watches his parents get inebriated. And he wonders when are they going to pass out and not wake up. And he covers his mom and dad with a blanket. And he turns them and helps them. Right now, right now there's a teenager who feels so much guilt and shame because they've lost their innocence. They did something they thought they would never do. And they're wondering now if they should make a permanent decision to a temporary circumstance. And they know that every church person would judge them if they ever told them. Right now, there's a man whose wife is going through his text and finding out that he's been unfaithful. And his world is crumbling because he's getting ready to lose everything he's hoped for. Right now, right now, within 20 minutes of where we're standing, there's a wife. Or there's a husband who's realizing that their spouse has been unfaithful to them. Right now, there's a mom praying that her husband would quit using God's name in vain in the garage in front of the kids and instead come to church with them. Right now, there's a businessman who every day got plenty of money, plenty of success, and is thinking about suicide, dreaming, fantasizing about. You know, the only hope, the only hope 
it's going to be the church. The world needs the message of the gospel. And let me tell you how this is going to work. Here's how it's going to go. God's going to bless us. And we're going to share what we've been blessed. And then he's going to put us in the workplaces. And when he gets them all where he wants them, he gets all the nurses and he gets all the, all the lawyers and all the doctors and all the people in the places that he wants them. Then one day when he gets some, all his answers, all his people that are going to be the people of God, that he wants them, that are going to be dispensing the love of God and sharing the love of God, then what he's going to do is when he gets all them people in the right spot, our Heavenly Father is going to say, Jesus, come here. And he's going to plant one time, one foot on heaven and one foot on earth. And he's going to say, Gabriel, blow that horn and all the saints of God will rise up and be with him in glory gonna happen it's gonna happen and let me tell you what you ain't what are you gonna say what you ain't gonna say is God I'm glad I'm here I kept all the donuts for myself see I got them you're gonna be embarrassed by that what you're gonna want to be able to say is him look at you and say I saw you I saw you reaching out. I saw you serving. I saw you using the time you got. I saw you using the money you got to build my kingdom. I saw you come here. Well done, my good and faithful servant. How many of you want to hear that one day? Would you stand up right here in here in Life Springs? I want everybody to stand up and let's give God a hand clap of praise. Everybody right now just give him praise. Come on, praise break. Get loud to him right now. We worship you, Lord. Come on right now, Life Springs, in the lounge, everybody, give him praise. Give him praise right now. Thank you, God. Father, I pray you pry open our hearts and you pry open our hands and let us share. And I'm grateful to this church for those who've learned to share. And I pray for those that this is hard to hear. Let us take this message and do something with it for the glory of God. And God, let less people go to hell and more people go to heaven because we didn't consume everything on ourselves. I'm going to release Life Springs now to end your service the way you see fit. But you that are standing there, make a commitment to God.